Hey, welcome back. This is Sid. Now get this. The best way to sharpen in Photoshop has nothing to do with the filter you use. It's all about the technique. Today, I'll show you an amazing technique that lets you take full control of the halos with any of your favorite sharpening filters, either high pass, unsharp mask, or smart sharpen. And here's the best part. It does it all on a single non-destructive layer. So make sure to stay till the end because after the landscape, I'll show you how to apply this technique on a portrait. So, sharpening in professional digital photography for fashion, beauty, portraits, landscapes, or absolutely any genre happens in three stages. The first is during capture, which depends on the quality of your lens and the focusing techniques that you use. Then is the creative sharpening in Photoshop, which is what this tutorial is about. And finally, an overall output sharpening applied in the end after resizing. In the last video linked above, I've shown you how digital sharpening in Photoshop actually works, which is nothing but an illusion created by applying heavy contrast around the edges of the details. This creates dark halos on the darker side of the edge and light halos on the lighter side. And both these halos are created equally with the same intensity and thickness. And this is where the problem lies. Because an image has edges of various contrast levels and this results in halos of different thickness, also known as ugly over sharpening artifacts. Now our goal here is to separate the halos with different amount of radius and intensity. And I can give you the final technique right away, but it is very important that you understand the concept behind it. So, let me start by showing you what exactly is split sharpening first. The basic idea behind this technique is to take control over the halos with which we can control over the sharpness. So I'm going to create a copy of this layer and for this example, I'll apply unsharp mask as it emphasizes the halo and color artifacts. The trick here is to differentiate the bright halos from the dark halos. We need to split them apart and how do we do that? Let me show you. I'm going to duplicate the sharpen layer. And to separate the halos into two different layers, I'll change the layer blend mode of this one to darken. So, the darken blend mode compares the pixels between the blend layer and the underlying base layer and displays whichever is darker. So it will hide the white halo and display only the dark edge. And with the opacity, we can control the strength. And the second duplicate layer, I'll set it to the lighten blend mode which is the opposite of darkened blend mode and only displays the lighter pixels between the blended and the underlying layer. And again with the opacity, we can control the light halos. But this doesn't take care of the color shifts, which you won't notice until you zoom in close to the edges. So let's turn the blend mode to normal again. Do you see all these color artifacts? Now, by changing the blend mode to luminosity, the sharpening will only affect the luminosity or the tones of the image and not the color. So this is the basic concept of the splitting sharpening technique. Now I'm going to show you how to apply all three blend modes on a single layer. So let's get rid of this and create a new copy of the original layer. Okay, so the way to apply all three blend modes to a single layer is by right clicking it and converting the layer to a smart object first. This is important and I'll show you why in just a minute. And then go on and change the blend mode to luminosity. And this will take care of all the color shifts. Because like we saw before, the luminosity blend mode disregards the color. Now for sharpening, I'll again be using the unsharp mask filter because this is still not the final technique for which I'll be using the high pass layer. So when I click OK, I will have the sharpening applied as a smart filter, which means I can double click here and change the radius settings anytime. Now I want to change the blend mode to darken, but I can't do it from here as it is set to luminosity. Well, have you ever wondered what this icon here does? If I double click on this, I can now use blend modes and even layer opacity on this particular smart filter. Isn't that great? So from here, I'll set the blend mode to darken, which will let me control the intensity of the dark halos using the opacity. Now I can either duplicate this layer and set the sharpening blend mode to lighten or I can simply add another sharpening on this same layer. And it can be a different filter this time. Let's say smart sharpen. Again, let's click on this icon and set it to lighten. And using the opacity slider, we can control the intensity of the white halo. So this is just another way of splitting the halos in the same layer. Now there are pros and cons between these two methods of split sharpening. The benefit of having lighten and darken smart filter on separate layers like we saw in the first example is that you can mask them individually. And in the second example, with them combined in a single layer, there will be only one common mask next to the smart filter. But don't worry, you don't have to choose. I have a third technique for you which combines the best of both worlds. 
So far and in the previous video on removing halos, I used the unsharp mask and smart sharpen filters and also explained the differences between the two, so make sure to check that out. But in this main creative sharpening tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the high pass sharpening technique and take it beyond its limitations. So let's start by creating a duplicate layer and convert it to a smart object, either by right clicking it or the panel users can click on make smart. Next, go to filter, other and high pass. The high pass filter retains sharp edge details with color, while the rest of the image becomes gray. And the edge thickness is set by the radius that we apply. So first I'll set the radius at zero. Now have a look as I increase the radius slider gradually. The fine details start to appear. At one pixel radius, the thickness of the edge is one pixel big. Let's zoom in to see the thickness. The more we increase the radius, the contrast spreads over the pixels, making the bright pixels brighter and the dark pixels darker. And these values will depend on the size of your image. So choose the radius that works best for your image. You can always change it later because we are applying it on a smart object. So once I'll click OK, I'll change the blend mode to overlay. Why? Because the overlay blend mode makes everything that is 50% gray into transparent. It also makes the light pixels lighter and the dark pixels darker. And that's why we only see the edges with boosted contrast, which if you remember from the first video is the same illusion used by sharpening filters to create sharpness. Now in order to remove all the color artifacts around the edges, we need to desaturate it. But here we can't set the layer blend mode to luminosity because it is already on overlay. So I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer to the smart filter to remove its saturation. Now, one limitation with the high pass sharpening technique is that you can't increase the intensity. Sure, you can increase the radius thickness, but for any set radius, you can only reduce the intensity by lowering the opacity, right? But you cannot increase the opacity beyond 100. So here's a trick to increase the intensity of the sharpness. If you remember what sharpness is, you will already know the answer. Yes, we're talking about contrast. Remember the previous video. Sharpness is nothing but an illusion of contrast around the edges. So to boost the sharpness, all we need to do is increase the contrast. So let's create a brightness contrast filter and increase the contrast. And if you max out and still want more, here's what you can do. Click OK and double click the smart filter layer properties icon. Now, if you change the blend mode to overlay, this will give you a subtle boost in contrast. And if you set it to linear light, you can get even more. Okay, so now that we have applied the sharpening, let's see how to split the halos on a single layer. Any guesses? I've explained it in the luminosity masking video and also shown it in the removing halos video. So leave a comment if you guess it right. So the halos are nothing but the light and dark luminosity around the edges. So to control them, I can use one of the luminosity masking method. And to do it without mask on a single layer, there is only one method that allows it, and that is the blendif method. To access the layer blendif, simply double click the layer, and if you move the white slider of this layer to the left, you're controlling the light halos. And by moving the black slider to the right, you can control the dark halos. You can also hold Alt or Option to split the slider and smooth the transition. Now, if you want to fully understand and learn how to use Blendif, make sure to check the Luminosity Mask video linked above. Now, when we are masking halos, I always suggest to leave the black slider close to its corner and only adjust the white slider. Because if you pay attention, you will notice that the white halo is usually the one that really stands out as an annoying over sharpening artifact compared to the black one. So most of the times, just by reducing the white halo, you can find the perfect balance between the light and dark halos. Now the final step in creative sharpening is selective sharpening. So what is selective sharpening? It is simply painting through the sharpen layers to target certain areas that you select. The details you want people to see should be sharpened and those you want them to ignore should not be. So for this image, I don't want the surrounding water and this little structure to be as sharp as the boat. And this is where selective sharpening comes in and is such an important skill to create a great image. So, all I'm going to do is invert the mask of my sharpening layer and gently paint white on the boat. If you're using a pen tablet, paint with a low flow. And for those who use a mouse or a trackpad, paint with a medium opacity. Some areas can have more intensity, so you can paint harder with a pen 
or a couple of time with your mouse over it. And since some areas of every image have soft details, this is a great way to balance out the details. And right now, it's all done on one single layer. Isn't that amazing? And another trick to make the sharpness stand out is to remove extra noise from around the subject. Let me quickly show you. So I've created a custom denoise layer, which is based on the noise removal technique shown in this video linked above. And I'll quickly paint black on my subject to hide the noise removal from it. And then reduce the opacity slightly so there is some grain structure visible in the smooth areas. So this looks sharp and it contrasts quite well against the smooth water around it. Now I'm going to show you an alternate way to use the same technique with portraits by applying two different thickness or dual radius. So before we begin, remember that sharpness should always be applied in the end and on a duplicate layer in Photoshop. So if you've corrected your image in RAW, make sure not to apply any sharpening there. Secondly, if you have retouched your image like I have done here, mainly the background cloning and skin retouch and color workflow using the panel. And now I'm ready to sharpen. So in this case, I will merge it all up on a new layer and then start with the sharpening. But I'm going to delete this merge layer for now and instead of doing all the steps again, I'll run it from the sharpen button from the panel which is based on this same technique and all I need to do is paint on the mask. But for now, I'll shift click on the mask to hide it and reveal the overall sharpening of the layer. And now pay attention to this. The size of the details that you want to emphasize is one of the most important factors in creative sharpening. If you're sharpening a portrait, you wouldn't want every individual pore on the model skin to be emphasized, right? Since the thickness of edges vary a lot in the same image, different radius of sharpening is required for different areas of the image. So for important images, be it portrait, beauty or landscape, I sharpen a couple of times with different amount of radius. Let me show you. First, I'll adjust the high pass radius by double clicking the smart filter layer. Remember when you edit a smart filter layer, the preview won't show you the effect of the other filters stacked on top. You will only get the final preview once you click OK. Right now, I want to set the thickness for the thicker edges for some areas of the eyes and the lips, which should lie anywhere between 1 to 3 pixels usually. By default, the opacity of the panel sharpen is set at 50%, but just so we can see things clearly, I'll make it 100. The light halo removal is already done, but you can always fine tune it and also reduce the black halo if required. And to increase the sharpening intensity more, you can first add a contrast layer which is already here and change the blend mode to overlay for subtle or linear light for a strong contrast. Now with portraits, the eyes are the most important part that a viewer makes connection with. So you need to emphasize the eyes and everything that lies in the focal plane of it. Never sharpen the tip of the nose because that's protruding out and so it's supposed to be a bit soft because if you sharpen it, it'll simply distract attention from the eyes. And for this radius of 2 pixels that we're using, we're not going to touch the nose at all. I mainly want to paint the inside of the eyes and very gently around the eyelashes. Now on the lips, I'll just add a dab in the center area. That's it. Once I'm done, I'll duplicate the sharpening layer and by double clicking on the high pass filter, I'll set the radius to a minimum setting for the fine edges like eyelashes, hair and so on. Now let's zoom in the eyes and I'll simply paint around the eyelashes very softly, the eyebrows, then the edge of the nostrils. These are the areas where the edge thickness is very fine and you can always see sharpening halos. You can use the fade tool to fade your brush stroke if required or hit X which switches the brush color to black and paint black on the mask to hide some overdone areas. And don't forget to press X and switch the brush from black to white again and slightly over the edge of the lips and finally some areas of the skin that are a bit soft and of course the hair not all of it, only the ones in the front that I want to be sharp now that looks fine let me group the sharpness layers and here is the before and after sharpening take a look at the difference and this was the original image before the retouching workflow. And this is the final. And if you want to download these two files, I'll link them in the description below. Now take a look at how the sharpness would look without the mask and without the light halo reduction. 
And this dual radius technique is not restricted to portraits. It can be used in absolutely any genre of photography. Now remember, what we've done so far is creative sharpening on the full resolution image. One of the biggest mistakes photographers make when it comes to sharpening is thinking they're done after this. Remember that different levels of sharpening is required for different final image resolutions. And this is done based on the final size of the image and what media it will be displayed on. So I hope you learned something new today. And if this is your first time here, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified. And for the early birds who are watching this video in the first 48 hours since the release of this video and have made it so far, here is a 50% discount for you for the Pro Workflow X panel which is already on sale on the website. So use this code displayed on the screen during your checkout. The website link is in the description below. Until next time, have fun retouching.